Hello and welcome to the All Rookie Podcast. Today is July 22nd, 2023. I'm your host, William Harris, aka William is Bill. And I'm back with another great episode for you guys with my main man, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Von Zell Lucky, aka the Vons. How you doing today, buddy? Pretty good, man. How are you? Good, good. Glad to have you back on. Tell everyone your Twitter so we can get straight into this summer league recap. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at uh, the Vons at T-H-A underscore V-O-N-Z. There you go. There you go. A must follow. He just came back from a trip to, from Hawaii. So, I mean, he's doing it big over there. So, let's get straight to it. Not <laughs> not Vegas, but Hawaii. So, <laughs> in this episode, we're going to talk about some of the summer league standouts. You know, our rookies class showed well. We had some ups and downs, but... You know, the biggest news was obviously the highly anticipated debut of Victor Wimbayama. How do you feel about his two-game sample size for the Spurs? Um, Victor, he gave me exactly what, what I was thought I was going to get out of Victor. But um, I think a lot of people have to, like, taper their expectations if they were looking for, like, some 25-point-a-night, you know, score as a rookie. You know, and that's just not his play style at all. You know, he, he averaged 18 points a game, gave you 10 rebounds. Uh, four blocks, and that's about what he's going to give you, what, what he's capable of. He shot 41% from the field while shooting 30% from three, and I also think that's about what we're going to be getting from him in his rookie year. Like, he's he's a seven, he's a seven-footer that can shoot, you know, but I don't think we're going to be seeing, like, 35 36% from three from him this year. But as far as someone that's going to give you, like, a double-double, you know, what we were seeing, like, from 15 to 18 points a night – between 10, 11, 12 rebounds a night and three or four blocks every single night, like he's going to be able to give you that, you know. So, and with the Spurs, with what Greg Popovich is going to be able to do there, if he's able to really turn him into more of a fundamental player, you know, like someone else we've seen at, at San Antonio, be- you know, instead of just <laughs> being like a, a strictly offensive minded, you know, type of player, you know, because that it seems like just watching him, that's what he wants to be. He wants to be a ball handler that can shoot the ball and kind of be a KD type person, you know, but if he can really just stick to the fundamentals of, yeah. you know, defense and passing, like he can really have a very impactful rookie year. Yeah, I think the media pressure, the scrutiny, it's either going to make him or break him. You know, I've already seen where he said, you know, he wants to take this rest of his off season, just get away from it all. Cause it's overwhelming. And uh, you know, like you said, that first game, everyone's saying, Oh, he's a bust or he's not as good. Da, da, da. But like, if you look at guys like Anthony Davis, he averaged 13 and eight his rookie season. If Victor does that, they're going to say he's the worst pick ever. You know, all that, <laughs> like in your first yeah. year, you're not supposed to be 20 and 10, but it, you know, if, if he's even close to that, that's amazing. So um, yeah, his, he showed me what I needed to see. You know, I'm not a big, I, I didn't think he was the number one prospect, obviously, but he did everything that you needed to see. You know, ironically, number two, well, number three and number four pick that we wanted possibly to go first, they ended up getting hurt. So uh, anything you want to hit on, Victor, before we go into the next guys? Um, yeah, There was um, a, a guy that um that was eerily similar to Victor that I was watching that um is going to be up for a rookie of the year as well, uh, whether or not we would like it, uh, Chet Holmgren. <laughs> you know, so... Um, I was able to, to have some time to watch him with the Thunder, and he was averaging uh, 17 points, 10 rebounds, two assists a steal, and four blocks a game with 48% from the field. It was very similar to what um, Victor is, is going to give you. But the only thing is the, only, the expectations aren't the same yeah. for Chet, you know, coming in this season. You know, but he's, a, he's able to give the same thing to a double-double and is a defensive-minded guy. And that three-point shot, I think he was like one for seven or something like that from the three-point line. Like that three-point shot wasn't falling. Same thing with Victor. And uh, But if he's just that defensive-minded guy that can give you 15 to 18 points a night, uh, double-digit rebounds, and three to four blocks every single night, he's going to be a candidate for Rookie of the Year if he can consistently give that and stay healthy as well. Yeah, and I got into it a little bit with somebody on Twitter about that. I don't think guys that missed their first year should be considered a rookie because he had that whole offseason to gain 15 pounds. 
if Victor next year, when he's 15 pounds heavier, he's going to be much better. But You know, see, I, I, I agree, you know, but the way I'm looking at it to where it's like a red shirt year. You know, yeah. if you want to win rookie of the year, draft a top five guy, red shirt him, you know, yeah. heal all the injuries from college and everything, yeah. and then have him play. Because we've seen Ben Simmons. We've seen a number yeah. of players, mm -hmm. Blake Griffin, Ben Simmons, you know, players that, that don't even play the first year, come back in and win rookie of the year. You know, so if, if that's the way you want to go about it, you know, know. they're definitely being red shirted, but yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, the next biggest news, other than Victor, you know, on and off the court with Victor, but was what was gonna happen with Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, and Amen Thompson. You know, unfortunately, like we mentioned earlier, Amen and Scoot got hurt in their first games, but they still show their brilliance and immediately, you know, they didn't need more than one game, really. Everyone saw it, it was like, okay, go sit down. But, you know, Brandon Miller had some very rough games in there to where people were calling him, Ugh, like, you know, should he have been picked this high? So, but what overall, what was your take on these three guys uh, coming in summer league and during summer league? Uh, starting with um with Brandon Miller, because as you know, I'm a, I'm a Hornets fan. So uh, even while I was out on vacation, you know, I'm hooking up to Wi-Fi and catching these these Hornets summer league games when I, when I can. And um, and I was regretting it, man. <laughs> I was regretting tuning in to the summer league, watching those them play those first few games. You know, it was bad for uh, for Brandon. But um, the thing, what was encouraging was that he didn't quit shooting. You know, the uh, the sh the shot percentage, he was thirty five percent from the field and twenty six percent from three. But he kept on shooting it. But um, he had one good game against Portland. Against Portland, he really lit it up. You know, he the gave last like, game. yeah the last game, yeah. the very last game they played. He he lit it up in that last game. But um, he, he, he can shoot. He's a good shooter. And I believe he can have a good future in the, the NBA. Um, but I don't know. It was just a, it was a tough debut for him in the summer league. But um, I think that he's going to have a decent enough year as long as he's able to stay healthy. Because with spacing, he's a good shooter. Yeah. Like just watching him play like he can shoot the ball, you know, so any he, and he actively looks to rebound and pass. And that was something I was surprised about, about his willingness to pass and play defense. You know, so even when his shot wasn't falling, he was actively trying to play defense, albeit not well. He had like six fouls in the first game, yeah, five fouls in the fouls. first quarter of the second game. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was ridiculous. Like, and when you watched it, it was just like, what are you doing? And, and some of the stuff, like straight up, you know, but, um, but. All, the, all that aside, <laughs> effort was there with defense. It looked like he cared about it. He was averaging what um, eight rebounds a night, so he's at, at the boards, and he, you know, and he's and he's getting some assists. So um, it was it was tough to look at, but the encouraging thing is that he's trying hard and he cares. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's also what's encouraging that you look at it. It's like, man, he had such a bad summer league, but then you look at his numbers. It was fifteen and seven. So mm -hmm. when he gets better gets into the flow of things i mean he can put up those numbers pretty easily it seems and you know that hornets summer league roster was just i mean it was talented players but it was one of the worst teams in the summer league can i say i'm so tired of the charlotte hornets sending the summer league there without a traditional point guard yeah you know this is three years in a row we're sitting there without a traditional point guard you know, James Booknight is not a point guard. Nick Smith Jr. is not a point guard. Amari, Amari Bailey is not a point guard. You know, none, none of these guys are on the team. Like, they're they're all um, – Bryce McGowan. Like, we have a, a bunch of guys that are two – like, two guards and threes that are looking to score. No one's looking to pass. So, in these games, Brandon Miller was looking to pass more than anyone else on the team. Yeah. You know, but um, another pick that the Hornets got, Nick Smith Jr., he ended up averaging 15 points on 36% from the three-point line, 40% from the field. And um, he, he looked all right in one of those games, the last game, yeah. when uh, him and Brandon Miller were able to play pretty well. But all the games before that weren't that great, but he showed out in that game. And Amari Bailey, the um, another pick for the Hornets, uh, he, he was averaging eight points a game and 37% from three. Um, he sneaky was my favorite performance out of besides um, uh, Najee. Besides Najee, like Amari Bailey, like he, he looked nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Hornets, you know, they got a long way to go, but we'll see what happens. But the little bit you got from Scoot and Amen, did that determine anything for you, or it's just what you expected? Um, so Scoot, he um he came out, and I was watching that game pretty heavily as um as someone that wanted Scoot Henderson in Charlotte. You know, I was a big proponent for that. But um, and he came out and he was setting it on fire. He was thirteen, had thirteen points, three rebounds, and three assists. And I don't know if he missed any shots, you know, early on in that first quarter. Like he was on fire. And then after that, he misses like next six shots and then got hurt. 
you know, but, uh, you know, so it's kind of night and day, but at the very beginning, he looked very much the part of everything that I and a lot of people believe that he was in that first quarter. So um, I still like to see more because, like I said, that after that, he was 0 for 6 on his next six shots. And it kind of was like a little all over the place. But I believe he he is exactly what we thought he was going to be. For sure. And amen. You know, he looked, you might say, even better than Scoop. So, you know, it's just unfortunate that they are on the teams that they're on. You know, we'll see what happens with Damian Lillard. But, you know, mm -hmm. Fred Van Vliet's in there with Houston. We want to see these guys come in and just hit the ground running. But we may have to, you know, wait a little bit. But, um, yeah, let me get into the scoring leaders in the summer league as far as rookies. The number one guy may be a little unexpected. Some people may not have even heard of him before, but Hunter Tyson for the Nuggets uh, led the scoring in the summer league for rookies with 21 points. Cam Whitmore, 19. Keontae George, 19. Julian Strother, 18. Another Denver guy. And Victor Wimbayama with the 18 in only two games. Uh, so those are some of the scoring leaders, but who were some other rookies that stood out to you in the summer league? Um, I don't know if you, you might've uh, mentioned Keontae George just now. Yeah. That was, that was a big, uh, highlight guy for me. Cause, um, I seen what he was doing in Baylor and I was like, all right, maybe that'll, that'll translate, but I wasn't high on him. I wasn't high on Keontae George guy, but seeing what he did, I'm a, I am now, I'm a, I'm a Keontae George guy now seeing what he did in the summer league. And between what Utah has, it looked like they were trying to rebuild. But, you know, Taylor Hendrick, who was injured, uh, they got him at nine. And uh, Bryce Sensabaugh was injured. They got him at 28. But between them and Keontae George, I'm I'm liking Keontae George a lot. Um, who else? Somebody that I really like. I think you you hit on, and like you said, Hunter Tyson. He was a um, one of the, the Nuggets in general. You know, the, our, yeah. our last pod that we did, I was like, I don't know what's going on with the Nuggets. You know, they, they're just making picks to where it's like they're, they're not bad picks, but it just seems like you could have got them at any any time. But these picks, like Julian Strother from, from Gonzaga was averaging 18 or 40 percent from the field, 30, 34 percent from three. And Hunter Tyson from Clemson, like he said, 21 points a game. He he shot at least seven three pointers a game and he was averaging 50 50 percent from the three point field. 50% from three, and he was shooting at least seven a game. Like, the Nuggets hit out of the park with that, you know. But um, And that third I mean, pick, Jalen Pickett, you know, he played well, too. Yeah, he did. You know, and Most people didn't even expect him to get drafted. They drafted him in the 30s. So, I mean, we, we kind of criticize him, but the Nuggets know what they're doing. The champs know what they're doing. So, <laughs> they do. <laughs> got to give him respect on that. You know, yeah. another guy that might have surprised people was – a guy me and you both were high on. A lot of people gave us slack for it. Imani Bates, averaging 17 points, six boards. People call us crazy. You know, I had him as a top 20 guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he led his team to the Summer League Championship. So I know you want to talk about our guy, Imani Bates. Man, who, who would have knew? You know, because <laughs> like I was I was comparing him to a um to Brandon Miller earlier in the draft, because I was like, if you need a guy that's, that's six foot nine, can put the ball on the floor and has a flamethrower, you know, that can shoot. You know, I'm, I'm comparing the two, you know, and they both can go get you those rebounds. The, th the thing that's different, you know, with Imani Bates is he doesn't seem to care about defense at all. Like that's not his thing. You know, he's not really going to give you the effort there. He's not really looking to pass the ball like that. But as far as someone that he has all the skills there and he showed it, you know, in, in these games, uh, what do you mind? Him? He's averaging 17 a game, 40 percent from the three point line and yeah. six rebounds. You know, it's like he's going after boards and was actively participating the entire time. You know, so he's going to have himself a spot in the NBA if he just keeps at it. You know, he was he, he had a great showing. Yeah, every time someone mentions him, you know, the people that were down on him, they still try to throw in, well, he wasn't efficient and all this. Like, come on now. He's 17 and six. He's a rookie. Rookie. On a bad Cleveland team. Mm -hmm. Like, and he gets it. You know, every interview I've seen him say, um, you know, I just want a chance. I don't want to shy. I want to prove people wrong. He's going to listen to the coach at this point. He's humble at this point. So get him with Donovan Mitchell and those guys. And, I mean, they could really have a skill, a uh, steal with a second-round pick and Imani Bates. Another guy, Jordan Walsh for um, the Celtics. I don't know if you saw him, but, I mean, I, I thought he was barely draftable. And he looked amazing for the Celtics. Looks like they may have hit a steal. With, well, he having 16 points, four boards, and a steal per game. That surprised me. That's the um, Is that the guy from out of uh, Indiana? Uh, I think he went to – I can't remember right now. 
Uh, uh, he played with Anthony Black. Black. He played with Anthony Black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm thinking the red and white jerseys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yes, Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, he, yeah. You know, he's he, not he a shooter, really but he shot the ball well. I know you want to talk about Grady Dick as well. Grady Dick, um, that's a guy that I was really high on uh, coming into the draft um, because he, his shooting was so good. But even in the summer league, he was shooting 30% from three. And I'm like, the one thing that I really liked about him was that shooting shooting 40% from the field, 30% from three. And when I was when I watched him play, his, his defense was was bad. He's getting pushed around in the paint, you know, doesn't really know where to be in, on the perimeter. Um, he averaged 16 points and like six rebounds, but it, it didn't it didn't translate the way it's like. I thought he could have been maybe a top 10 pick and he's, he's showing where, why he slid to 13. And I don't know, he's, he's going to struggle to find some minutes if he can't you know, get his efficiency efficiency up as far as scoring and play a little bit better defense. I mean, yeah, that it, it didn't look great. Yeah, it made the Magic look like they knew what they were doing. You know, they got criticized for taking Jet Howard above him and Jet, you know, looked more comfortable an all-around player. And, you know, Grady was, you know, a little bit of a struggle. You wouldn't see that in the numbers with 16 and 6 and a one and a half steals per game. But, you know, looking in between the film, you know, you see that. Um, you know, I know you checked out our guy Leonard Miller from Minnesota, fell to the second round somehow. We both had him in the lottery, and he proved everyone that they were wrong, and he should have been a top 15 pick for sure. How do you feel about Leonard Miller uh, for Minnesota? Leonard Miller is doing exactly what I thought he was going to be doing, like same same as you. It's like we've seen him play with the G League Ignite. Every time we do a pod, he comes up, you know, with just someone that's on the rise. And yet again, like we just saw in the summer league playing for um for Minnesota, um, he's out there balling. He's running the floor. And what's surprising people is he has a bit of a shot. You know, he he can shoot a little bit. You know, so if you're if you have someone that's a willing defender, he's a six foot nine eleven somewhere in there. You know, he's a, he's a tall guy. You know, with a crazy wingspan that's getting up and down the floor. He's an athlete and he can shoot. He, he's starting to be able to put that shot around a little bit. So I mean. He's, he's doing exactly what I thought he was going to do. And I think he's going to continue to surprise people throughout his rookie year. For sure, for sure. I'm very happy for him. I I don't know if I love the landing spot in Minnesota, but it seems like the, with the way he's playing, they're going to try to make me, a way to find minutes for him. What, what, what I do like about it with um with Minnesota is, um what's my man, Anthony Edwards. This guy is like, if you're a dog, you're going to – Find a way to be inside of his his gravity. You know, he he brings that energy in. It's kind of like a um a Jimmy Butler type thing. Either you're gonna be drawn to it or repelled by it. Yeah. You know, so if if you're if you're that type, and I think he has that type of energy to where I think he'll eventually find himself some minutes with Anthony Edwards on that squad. Yeah, those two together, that's a bright future right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the last guy I'm gonna mention as far as impressed me was um Kobe Brown for the Clippers, the last pick in the first round. I don't know if you got to see anything on him, but people were saying, what are the Clippers doing? But, I mean, he looked very comfortable out there, 14 points, almost a steal in a block per game. And he got hurt in the last game, so his numbers would have been better than that. He was very impressive. Any other people you want to hit on that impressed you? Oh, so with Kobe Brown, so, yeah, I seen him too. I was like, he's looking really good. But um, I was wondering if the Clippers are going to try to use him as a trade piece because you got James Harden hollering how bad he wants to be a Clipper. You know, but, uh, but has it it's so funny. We've talked about the Rockets, now the Clippers. Who knows what James Harden? <laughs> yep. But um, other players that uh, they're really impressed. The uh, the Thompson twins uh, talked a little about a bit about Amen Thompson. He only played that one game. He was very impressive as advertised. But um, Asar Thompson, even more like I was already high on him, but his playmaking ability is and and his defense like we knew he could play defense um he was kind of um looked at like a uh, Andre Iguodala you know coming in that's who he was kind of compared to but his playmaking like early on Iguodala didn't he had the defense and the athleticism but he wasn't that type of playmaker you know coming into the NBA and another one of the comps they gave him was a uh, Scotty Pippen you know and uh this this is another thing to where the, the playmaking he has playmaking that you really can't teach this type of stuff, you know, and if, and if you are going to teach it, it's going to take a, a long time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but um, he, he's, um, his passing is so good for somebody that's six foot seven, six foot eight. He's not a point guard, but um, if you look at someone like Anthony Black, who's going to be playing on the wing, but it can pass the ball and get you a good amount of rebounds. Uh, Asar Thompson is going to be that plus more. He's going to give you, 10 to 15 points a night. He's going to give you a lot of rebounds. He's going to lock down on defense. Um, he's 
I'm very I'm very high on Asar Thompson. I like him yeah. all the time. I mean, he averaged a double double, 13 and a half points, 10 boards. He he led all rookies in rebounds with the 10 yeah. boards, and he's you know not a center, not a power forward. Two steals, two blocks, you know. So he's gonna be having all around type of stats. You know, it's just a matter of how's he gonna play. He's not gonna start at the two. He's not. He might not start at the three. Uh, until they get Bogdanovich out of there. But, you know, it's going to be interesting with Detroit. They got a lot of talent. Uh, I got to mention Colin Castleton, the undrafted rookie. He played well for the Lakers, averaging 14 and 9. And, you know, he went undrafted. People are saying they need a big. I mean, they might have found a big, uh, you know, as a diamond in the rough right there with the Lakers. I know you used to like the Lakers. You got any love? You like the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you still like them? Jalen Hood, you still know. love the Lakers. <laughs> Still love love for your Lakers. They had um Jalen Hushafino, who um he didn't like uh, perform all that well in the summer league. But um uh, the last the pick from last year, Max Christie, he showed out in the summer league. Uh, he's a oh, second year yeah. guy. But yeah, but um but Jalen Hushafino, I was watching him. He didn't do great. He's a, a Charlotte guy, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to pick it up when the uh, preseason starts. Yeah, yeah, and uh um Max Max Lewis didn't do that well either. But yeah, it, it's exciting what um. Uh, Max Christie did. But uh, now let's go into our biggest disappointments. You know, I got a couple names down, but is there anyone you think that stood out to you as, uh, is it a big, big, big um, letdown? Yeah. Um, we may have already mentioned them, you know, in, in the purple and teal, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, One that maybe um is Bilal Koulibaly. Is that how you pronounce it? Bilal Koulibaly? Yeah, yeah. So um he was he was drafted number seven. He was a teammate of Victor Wimbiyama. And um some people believe that maybe being a teammate of Victor is what got, got him drafted where he was at, you know. Cause yeah. um before the draft, or a few months before the draft, he wasn't even a first rounder. Like he was like bottom of the first round, second. And the closer we got to the draft, he kept creeping up there. But um at number seven, he was averaging about 12 points, five rebounds, 40% from the field, but about 18% shooting threes you know, three point percentage. So um that was a bit of a disappointment. And he he played a good amount, you know, of time and games. And so that that was that was one of the bigger disappointing performances that that I've seen. And sure. they traded up to get him too. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but I mean he showed some, you know, versatility on defense, averaging two blocks per game. So mm-hmm. I mean that's good. They're kind of getting the uh, the like the Walmart version of Asar Thompson maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll see so. how they feel about that. Uh, a, a guy I gotta mention, you know, we both talked about off show Noah Clowney. Uh, you know, I'm big on Noah Clowney, but he kind of had a letdown in summer league. Yeah, he 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 laid an egg. It, it was averaging like a little less than five points a game. Twenty two. You know, his his field goal percentage was twenty two percent. Three point percentage was twenty three percent, and he played five games. You know, we we had a good sample size. It wasn't like he played a game and then it wasn't like a Brandon Miller type thing. To, but this is five games and there wasn't any, you know, time within there until he was able to pick that percentage up. So that was that's pretty discouraging. You know, he yeah, was I mean, he was picked number 21, you know, so that, that was pretty discouraging. And he's like 6'10", 6'11", 5 rebounds, 5 points, 5 rebounds. I mean, you got to – I don't understand what, what went wrong there. But, um, you know – I, I had another – Go ahead. I had, I had one more guy. It's like he's he was because I, I from Detroit, so they they had a Sar Thompson, and I was just watching how much I love a Sar Thompson there. And then I, they had at number twenty five, they drafted Marcus Sasser. Oh yeah, you know. So so I'm looking for Sasser, and early on, I'm like, this is not looking good, mm-hmm. you know, because you know they have so many guards there. They yeah. already have so many guards, and now you got Sasser there, and he's a bit undersized. And I'm like, how is this going to work in Detroit? So like, you got to light it up. If you're gonna be this, he was just disappointing, disappointing, disappointing. And then, like by the end of summer league, he had like a forty point game. He was like forty points on that head, you yeah. know, just to just show what he can do. So it's like I couldn't put him in the the. He surprised me, like did great, and I couldn't put him in the disappointing <laughs> because of that forty point game, you know. But I had had to mention him though. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm big on Sasser, but it, it does seem like he kind of needs to be the guy, and he's gonna go off. But if he has to play a role, I think he'll disappear. Um, you know, a guy a lot of people were high on, Derek Lively. He, he was, I guess you could say, solid maybe because he had eight points and eight boards, but he didn't even have a block per game. I don't know how he's going to fare with the Mavericks uh, this season. You know, I, I was thinking about um, a guy that, they, that the Mavericks had out of Kentucky. Um, 
I can't think of the guy's name. He was a center a little while back. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to get a good amount of minutes because they're going to have to play him. They need the defense. They didn't re-sign Christian Wood, you know, who was getting a lot of minutes coming off the bench. So I think Derek Lively is going to get a good amount of minutes. He plays solid defense. And Luka Doncic is one of the better um, alley-oop throwers in the entire league. You know, he's getting pow so many uh, alley-oops per season. So I think Lively is going to do great at that. So those eight points a game that he was getting in the summer league, I think we can see about 10 in the, the regular season with Luka Doncic. Yeah, he should be better with Luka. But, I mean, he looked a little skinny out there. I just I just want to see more from him. Uh, you know, they did bring in Rashawn Holmes. Who knows if he'll have a resurgence there. But uh, you never know. But uh, James Najee with the Hornets bringing it back. He only averaged four points, six and a half boards, two blocks. Was that disappointing to you? Or do you think, well, they just didn't really give him a full compliment in minutes? Um, so he didn't really play in the first few games because of, um, Kai Jones was getting a lot of the minutes. But by the time Kai Jones, they took Kai Jones out and just had James play the last two games, getting all the minutes, um, he showed exactly what it was that he's about. He's a like an old school 90s center to where he's going to get up and down the court and he's going to box out, rebound, play defense. He's a um, – if people people know uh, Bismack Biombo, that but big. <laughs> you know, so real it was big. just yeah, it was just just real big. So he's only going to be doing the, the the fundamental things that you need. So it's like he's not going to be able to score on his own. You're going to have to create points for him. But if you need someone that's going to play defense, get rebounds, block shots, pr- protect the rim and the paint, like he's he's that. But uh, they said we're going to be sending him back to Barcelona uh, to play for the next year. He's not even going to oh, be in Greensboro. I didn't even hear that. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Well. That makes sense, I, I guess, because I don't think he would get a ton of minutes this year. But, hmm, okay. And uh, the last guy I have is a disappointment. Uh, he was picked kind of late, but I had a top 25 ranking on him with City Suzuko with uh, the Spurs. You know, especially with Victor Wimanyama sitting out the rest of those games, I expected him to turn it up. But he only averaged four points and five boards with one block per game. So I wanted to see more out of City Suzuko. Did anyone else drop the ball for you? Um. So th- this is going to be the, the hottest take, I think, of the entire thing. The person that dropped the ball to me – now I'm not going to say drop the ball because you can't no, drop go ahead and say it. He said it. No, <laughs> you, can't, you can't drop the ball and win Summer League MVP, <laughs> you know, because because that's Cam Whitmore. He won Summer League MVP. And I, and I watched him play, you know, so much because I was there to watch Amen Thompson. You know, but Amen Thompson, he was hurt after the first game. So uh, the, the Rockets, they continued to play. They made it all the way to the Summer League Championship when they played the Cavs. So it's so many games getting to see Cam Whitmore play. He averaged 19 points and five rebounds, but he was shooting 40% from the field and 33% from three. So as far as him winning Summer League MVP, I don't see much difference between him and Imani Bates. You know, as far as, you know, the way we're playing it, we're talking about, like, I'm, no defense was really being played. We're, like, hunting for, for shots. It's not that efficient, you know. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of players that I felt played better than Cam Whitmore. And when I watched him, regardless of the Summer League MVP, I understand why he wasn't a top five guy, you know, to where this guy is a – he's looking for his own shots. He's not looking for his teammates to pass the ball. He's not interested in defense like that. But if he's on and the, he can be like a Marcus Sasser, if he can run the team, he can give you he can give you some buckets, you know. Yeah, it's interesting the way people look at guys because you'll you look at Imani Bates doing and say he's selfish, and you look mm-hmm. at Cam Whitmore, who guys were high on, and he failed, and it's like, see, he's he's great, he shouldn't have failed. Mm-hmm. So it's all about perspective, you know. That's why we try to keep it real mm-hmm. and unbiased, you know. Even though you know we have players that we like, we still try to be unbiased. But speaking of players that we like, that you like more specifically, I got to get into your two guys, Anthony Black, Case, and Wallace. Did you have thoughts on them, Anthony Black? He looked real good one game, and the other games I didn't really see much from him, but it's, it, he did pretty good with rebounds. How you feel about Anthony Black? I, that was – he still is. He's one of my favorite guys um, from the draft, and he disappointed me a little bit yeah. um, just from what I expected from him as far as being able to to score and get his own shot. He was averaging about 11 points a game, but um, obviously he's not a shooter, you know, but um, – and I wasn't expecting him to come in there and just be pulling up middies or – you know, shooting that well from the three-point, but he was shooting 17% from three uh, this summer league, around 17%, about 41% from a field goal, which isn't terrible, 
But um, just watching it, it got a bit uncomfortable by the second or third game, just noticing that he it's like a Ben Simmons type of thing to where he's not afraid to shoot, you know, or play basketball on offense, but players are able to just step back a little bit. It messes up the spacing, you know, but um, if you get him on a team where with the, the Orlando Magic, if you put him on there with actual spacing with guys that can shoot, he's going to be nice, you know, but it's the I, I hope he's able to you know, get some type of mid-range game, you know, to, to just be able to make make people respect your shot. Yeah, because, you know, I was kind of down on him, but the, the game I did see, I was like, okay, I can see how this can work. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, he's got to put it all together. He might not just not be ready from day one to mm-hmm. come in and take over, but I could see a path where that could work for Anthony Black. So it was kind of up and down, but um, pretty good, pretty good. And Kaysen Wallace, you know, he averaged 11 points. One and a half steals per game for OKC. He had an amazing game, one of those games too. But then I guess he kind of tampered down. What do you think about Casey Wallace? Um, he's he's about what I, what I expected. You know, he's a um a two way. He can play defense. He can give you some offense. Um, he's a solid guy on both sides of the court. Um, he was he was hitting some threes like in in one of those games. Like I not one of the games he hit like four or five threes. You know, some, something ridiculous. I have to go back and watch. But uh, he was surprisingly really good shooting three-pointers in one of those games. But, um, yeah, he, he was about what I expected from him. He can play some solid defense. He's good on offense. Well, he's he's confident on offense. Mm-hmm. And um, that three-pointer looked a little bit better than I thought. Yeah, you know, for me, it was about fit. You know, I was down on him because I see him as a backup guard. But as far as this OKC team – I already said they have too many point guards. And then you have in the summer league, Trey Mann came out there, played amazing, 20 points uh, per game. Jared Butler, 16 points per game. So they're loaded with point guards. I'm guessing they're going to get rid of one of them, but I don't know if Kaysen was the right fit for this team, unless they're planning on moving Josh Giddy or something in some bigger package. They better not. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. But this, all in all, this summer league was very fun. You know, we got most of what we wanted to see. We hate the injuries, but do you have any final thoughts on this summer league? Um, I think you just hit on it just now, the injuries. You know, we went in waiting to see our top five players, but the top five, in the top five, uh, the number three guy in Scoot Henderson, the number four and number four guy in Amen Thompson. Um, who, I mean, it was just so many Jared injuries. Walker has a little injury in his elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jerry Walker. He just had a uh, a surgery, um, not recently. Um, who else? Like um, Bryce Hensbaugh didn't play. Taylor Hendricks didn't play. Um, there was just it was a lot of injuries. Um, Jaime Hawkins Jr. That was another person that that was surprising. He played one game, um, and he was he had like eighteen in the game. He was looking good. Like he's he's intense. He's playing defense. Like he's he's a Miami guy, and he looks like a Miami guy. But he had a shoulder injury and went out, and he's hurt too. Yeah. So um, that was the only thing for me. That was just like the the, the injuries. It's like, dang, but it, it's, it's part of the game. Yeah, but, you know, all in all, like I said, great summer league. And this yes. is like a sneak peek of what you're going to get. Next, we have the preseason coming up, and it's only going to get more intense and ramp up from there. Some of these guys averaging 14, 15, those numbers are going to drop down. Some of these guys getting minutes, they're going to be riding the bench. So we're going to see the real squads come out. So I have to say thank you so much, Lucky, for joining me, Mr. Vonzel Lucky. Tell them your Twitter one more time and any parting thoughts. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at T-H-A underscore V-O-N-Z. Uh, any parting thoughts? Uh, Miss, the Summer League has become a um, a bigger thing than I've ever imagined it was going to be. You know, like three, not even four years ago, it's like it just wasn't really a conversation with um, just the general public, you know. But now, is they they have the whole globe, you know, out there in the uh, in Vegas now, the uh, the new building that they built, that globe thing with the summer league basketball to where everybody can see coming in now. It's just a huge thing now. But um, but yeah, that's part and thought. The summer league for the NBA, they have turned up. Yeah, it's all about the media. You know, they're making these guys famous before, you know, they even get to college, you know, like Imani Bates, Victor Wimbayam. Like, these, we've been following these guys for three or four years now at this point. So, and the international prospects. So, it's making the game global, like you said. But, yeah, thank you again, The Vons, for joining me on this NBA Summer League standout recap. And follow me, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow both of us. Thank you all so much for listening and joining. Until next time, I'm out of here. We're out of here. Peace.
Peace.